now we'll see the base case simulation we have defined the base case this is the base case this is the level 1 and level 2 and whatever heat is picked up in level 1 is sent back to this condenser or rejected in this condenser. Now, for the present problem we will develop base case simulation that means, the mathematical models through which we will be able to predict the power requirement. So, for the base case simulation we will design the cycle 1 the cycle 1 will be used for the refrigeration level 1 which operates between minus 23.8 degree centigrade to 25 degree centigrade and the cycle 2 which provides refrigeration in level 2 which provides which operates between minus 45.5 degree centigrade to 25 degree centigrade. Now, for this cycle 1 we have to calculate what is the pressure of the refrigerant which will correspond to a temperature through which we can reject heat to the cooling water. So, the pressure is calculated using this equation. And these are the values of A, B, C into that equation, where P is written in mm of Hg and T degree centigrade. So, when I use this values into this equation, then P saturation comes out to be 2004.6789 millimeter of Hg, which is correspond to 2.6727 bar. And this is for evaporator and for the condenser when I use the same equation it comes out to be 11.568 bar. The pressure at the evaporator will be 2.6727 bar and the pressure required for the condenser which will satisfy the temperature levels will be 11.658 bar that means, 2.6727 bar to 11.658 bar this has to be compressed and the pressure has to be raised. So, pressure ratio becomes 11.658 divided by 2.6727 comes out to be 4.36198. This is the pressure ratio for cycle 1 because I am talking about cycle 1. So, here the condenser is operating at 11.658 bar and this evaporator which is level 1 evaporator is operating at 2.6727 bar. So, from this pressure to this pressure the vapor has to be compressed using a compression. So, the pressure ratio is this. Similarly, for cycle 2 we will compute this is for cycle 2. For the evaporator, the cycle 2 is operating at 1.12321 bar because cycle 2 is operating at much lower temperature. So, its pressure has to be lower. So, it is 1.12321 bar and the condenser pressure remains same as 11.658 bar. So, this is the condenser pressure. So, the pressure ratio is 11.658 divided by 1.12321 comes out to be 10.379. So, this compression ratio is very high and generally for this compression ratio a single compressor is not used because the energy consumption will be more. But for the present case we will be using a single compressor for comparison purposes. So, here this is the same pressure 11.658 and this is the pressure 
1.1232 bar. And so, the vapors from this pressure that is 1.1232 bar it has to be compressed to a pressure of 11.658 bar then only it will be able to reject at its heat to the cooling water. Now, this shows the, the cycles cycle 2 is this the it is operating with the evaporator 2 which is operating at minus 45.5 degree centigrade and pressure is 1.1232 bar here and this is then compressed by a compressor this to this pressure which is 11.658 bar and the condenser temperature is 25 degree centigrade and we are using cooling water into this. So, this vapor is then condensed to liquid here and then it is expanded and a vapor liquid mixture goes to this evaporator. Now, the pressure is here, here is 10.379 and this is cycle 2. Similarly, for cycle 1 this is the evaporator which is operating at minus 223.8 degree centigrade and pressure is 26727 because it is working at a lower pressure its temperature is lower and this vapor has to compress to 11.658 bar then only it will be able to give heat to this cooling water which is at 20 degree centigrade maximum. So, the pressure ratio is 4.362. Okay. Now, this gives the comparison for cycle 1 the evaporator is operating at 2.6727, cycle 2 it is 1.1232 and the condenser pressures are the same 11.658, 11.658 and this the cycle 1 is operating at a pressure ratio of 4.362 and the cycle 2 is operating at 10.379. So, we are doing the base case simulation. The pressure ratio in the cycle 2 is little high uh, for a single stage compression. However, a single stage compression will be assumed for the sake of comparison between different options. Here we uh, taking we are taking heat capacity ratio gamma to be 1.13. Now, the next step involves the calculation of mass flow rate of the refrigerant by performing a energy balance around the evaporator where mass flow rate m will be q evaporator divided by h 2 minus h 4 and h 2 is the specific enthalpy at the evaporator outlet saturated vapor enthalpy at the evaporator pressure and h 4 is the specific enthalpy at the condenser outlet because in the condenser outlet the vapor will be condensed to the liquid. So, it will be a saturated liquid enthalpy at the condenser pressure. Now, Q evaporator is 9.94792 megawatt this we know this has come from the GCC. H 2 we have calculated we will I will show you a table in the last part of this lecture from where we have picked up this H 2 value and H 4 values. Then we compute M. So, m comes out to be 3.262 kg per second. So, for this is cycle 1, cycle for cycle 1 the mass flow rate of refrigerant is 3.262 kg per second and the rho value for this is 5.8 kg per meter square cube. This has also been taken from the data which is shown in the last part of this lecture. Then we calculate F in which is the uh, volumetric flow rate of the refrigerant. This is mass divided by the uh, density this comes out to be 0 0.5624 meter cube per second. Now, for cycle two similar calculations were computed. Uh, this Q evaporator is taken as 0 0.8921 megawatt H 2 and H 4 are calculated from the data. 
So, m comes out to be 3.2967 kg per second density is this taken from again data table then f in is calculated as 1.1774 meter cube per second. Now, these are the for cycle 1 and cycle 2 this data is available with me for q evaporation that means, the evaporator load is for cycle 1 this is 0 0.94792 for 2 is 0 0.8921. H2 minus H1 is this 290.6, 270.6, M the flow rate of the uh, refrigerant is 3.319, here 3.2967, here rho V is 5.8, in the here 2.8, this F in is this and this. Now, the isentropic compressor efficiency and polytropic coefficient outlet temperature and power requirements can now be calculated as shown below for cycle 1 and cycle 2. So, for isentropic efficiency of the compression can be calculated by this equation where r is the compression ratio. So, we have put these values and the for cycle 1 it comes out to be 0 0.8463. Now, the n is calculated by this formula for the cycle 1 and this comes out to be 1.1547. So, this is polytrophic coefficient n. Now, T out for cycle 1 is T evaporator into this equation comes out to be 303.57 degree centigrade and the work done is calculated by this formula and this comes out to be 0 0.28507 and this has got a negative sign. So, P evaporator is in mega Pascal we have used here and so this will be in megawatt and the negative sign indicate the work input to the compression and that is why it is a negative sign uh, this is a sign convention basically. For cycle 2 similar computations were done the isentropic efficiency is computed as 0 point, uh, 0 0.90452. The polytropic coefficient n is calculated the same formula the value is 1.14359. and this T out is computed using this formula and the work done is calculated then. It is also a minus 0 0.392567 megawatt. Here the P evaporator is in mega Pascal and the negative sign indicates the work input to the compression. So, it is a sign convention again. So, this is the uh, base case simulation data for us for cycle 1 isentropic coefficients are given for cycle 1 and cycle 2 polytrophic coefficient is also given outlet temperatures are given and power is also used here. So, through simulation what we observed that the power required to reject the heat to the cooling water 
from the level 1 as well as level 2 is 0 0.677642 megawatt. This is the ideal power and actual power which we have computed is somewhat more this is 0 0.770135 megawatt. So, there is a difference in the power here this is the simulated power and this is the actual power. Now, why we have go, gone for the base case simulation? Because now we will try different designs and for those different designs experimental data is not available with us. So, we have to simulate those different designs to find out what is the energy consumption of those designs and hence we have done the base case simulation and the simulation value is this and the actual value is this. So, obviously, the actual value will be more than the simulation value for all comparison we will be using now this value because we will take many designs and then we will simulate the power consumptions of those designs and hence we will compare these those values with this value which is the base case simulation value. Now, we will go for refrigeration targeting. Now, how we will do the refrigeration targeting? This is based on alternate designs. What will be our aim? To save energy of compression and hot utility. This will be the two aims to save energy compression of uh, compression and hot utility. Now, is, these are the different designs. We have created design number 1 to design number 5. Now, this is the base case here the heat available with level 1 and level 2 are rejected to the cooling water this was the base case. Now, in the design 1 what we are doing a part of the energy which is available in level 1 is rejected here for the process because this demands hot utility. So, this heat is rejected here and the rest is rejected to the cooling water. Similarly, the heat which is available which has been consumed here by the evaporator is rejected to the cooling water. So, this is a design number 1 and we will compute the energy requirements for this and hot utility requirements for design 1. Similarly, here we have three designs design 2, design 3 and design 4. In the design 2 all the heat which is available in this temperature level is rejected to the cooling water. However, here whatever the heat is available here a part of heat is rejected to this because if this requires this area requires heat. So, it is being rejected this 298.2 kilowatt is rejected there in this temperature level and rest is rejected to the cooling water. Similarly, in the design 3 the total heat available here is rejected to the cooling water a part of it heat is rejected to the cooling water and the rest heat is rejected in this temperature level which is a process sink. This is a process sink and basically this is rejected to condenser number 2 which we have discussed in the GCC. In this design whatever heat is taken up by the evaporator here a part of it is rejected at this level rest is rejected to the cooling water. Here also a part is rejected to the cooling water and the rest is rejected to the processing which is here in the condenser number 2 which services 
gives hot utility to the process streams. Similarly, we have another design which is design number 5. Here a part of it is rejected here at this temperature level which is condenser number 2 and rest is rejected to the cooling water. A part of this is rejected to this temperature level and satisfies the heat demand from here to here which is 403 kilowatts and the rest is rejected to the cooling water. Now, you will see that when I am rejecting 298.15 kilowatt to here, this is satisfying the heat demand of this which is 403. How this is possible? Because when I am pushing up this heat to this level, a considerable amount of work is being done and that work is converted to heat and that is why whatever heat will reach here will be more than the heat which has been lifted from here. So, we have taken 5 designs and for the each design we will do the simulation and we will find out what is the amount of power required to operate the refrigeration systems given in those designs. Plus, we will see that how much hot utilities they have able to decrease. Now, let us do the refrigeration targeting for design 2. Here what I am doing? The whatever heat which is available and level 1, all the heats are pushed up to the water condenser and whatever heat is picked up here in the level 2, a part of heat is put here, is used as a hot utility and the demand of hot utility in this region is 0 0.403 megawatt. So, a part of heat is lifted here and the whole region is satisfied that means, 403, uh, 0 0.403 megawatt is supplied here and the rest heat is put into the water condenser which is operating at 298. Now, if this is the situation then we have to simulate that how much energy is consumed for the compressors for this design 2 and how much hot utility it has able to save. Obviously, it is able to save 0 .0 0 0.403 megawatt of hot utility only I have to use hot utility for this reason for this case. So, here we calculate what is the what is uh, the uh, energy required it comes out to be 0 0.04846 for the megawatt of energy required to take the heat from the level 2 and to serve it on the condenser number 3. So, here Q evaporator is not known, so but this Q evaporator is Q condenser minus W because the Q evaporator plus this W will go to the condenser and will satisfy the 4 0 0.403 megawatt. So, if we calculate it we find that this is the amount of energy which will be required to push the heat. If I go up, so this heat which will satisfy to this is equal to the heat taken from this level plus the work done which will be done to lift this heat from here to here. So, the energy required is this 0 0.104846. Now, the the level 2 heat will be taken up from the level 2 and pushed into 275.5 Kelvin. So, the temperature level of this is 
which is a process sink is 275.5 Kelvin. So, if I deduct it 0 0.403 minus the work which has been done, it comes out to be 0 0.298145 megawatt. That means, this much amount of heat if from level 2 is passed to the process sink which is condenser number 3, then it will satisfy the whole requirement of the condenser 3 which is 0 0.403 megawatt. So, balance it which will come out to be 0 0.8921 minus this amount which comes out to be 0 0.5939455 megawatt. This will go to the cooling water from level 2. So, the balance of the cooling demand on level 2 is 0 0.5939455 megawatt together with the load from level 1 must be either be rejected to the process at a higher temperature above the pinch or to the cooling water. And in design 2 we are servicing the cooling water that means, we are passing off this heat to cooling water. Now, to reject the heat from level 1, one thing we should note that the, this rejection to the process will add to complexity both in the design and operation. Also, there seems little advantage in such an arrangement since heat can be rejected to cooling water 25 degree centigrade. Therefore, the rest of the rejection heat will be assumed to go to the cooling water from level 1. So, what we are doing? from level 1 I am resetting the heat totally to the cooling water and to do so I will be needing 0 0.30938 megawatt and the rest amount of heat which is available in level 2 if I take that to the cooling water then my requirement will be 0 0.193851 megawatt. So, if I add them together, so total energy requirement will be this. This is the partial heat from level 2 to the condenser number 3 and these two heats are to push to the cooling water, the heat from evaporators to push to the cooling water. So, total is 0 0.6080776 0 megawatt and this is the simulated power for heat regeneration to cooling water that is base case was 0 0.677642 megawatt and this is the value here now for the design 2 and the actual value was this. So, saving is 0 0.069566 megawatt. So, if I go for design 2 I will be able to save 0. 0.069566 megawatt of energy. Similarly, and if I see what sort of a refrigeration cycle will meet design to. So, this shows a refrigeration cycle. It is a multi stage compressor where vapors are coming out to at two different temperatures and pressures. So, this is at one pressure this forms cycle 2 and this forms cycle 1. Now, let us go for the refrigeration targeting for design 1. Here what we are doing? We are taking a part of heat which is available here in this evaporator to this level, which is a process level and this is operated by condenser number 3 and the whole heat available at this level is put to the cooling water. So, here we have in the level 1 two 
compression energy is required in two lab compression energy for this and compression energy for this. So, here 342.7 kilowatt is lifted from here to here for this I have to use some energy and 605.2 kilowatt is lifted from here to this cooling water I need some energy and for here 892.1 energy is lifted from this to cooling water. So, 3 ener energies are required. So, here I get W 1 A and W 1 B is this and in the W 2 this is this in the level 2 which I am investing energy. So, if I add up this 3 energies comes out to be 0 0.7185623 megawatt. So, we see that the energy has increased and what we are doing we are able to reject heat to through condenser 3 403 kilowatt. That means, we are able to reduce 403 kilowatt of hot utility of the process and we will be investing this much amount of energy for compression which is more than the earlier one. So, the savings is minus that means, I have to use more energy than my base case in this. So, we go for design 3 now what here we are doing the whole amount of heat which is available in this level 1 we are rejecting into the cold water. A part of it which is available here in level 2 is being served here in this level. So, the hot utility requirement of this level is satisfied by taking heat from level 2 to this level and this will be done through condenser number 2. Okay. Now, these values are whatever been you are seeing here this is the amount of heat which it is lifting, but when it reach here the heat will increase because this will then it will be added with the the heat which will be generated due to into the compression. So, here whatever values we are seeing here the energy used for compression is not included into this and that is why this plus this is this value 892.1 which is the heat picked up into this invert evaporator. So, if I do the simulation for design 3 I get this. Now, in level 2 there will be 2 requirement of energy this is W 2 A W 2 B these are this values 0 0.4173125 megawatt and 0 0.049278 megawatt and for the level 1 it will be 0 0.30938 megawatt and heat rejection to the condenser 2 will be 1 to 1 4 kilowatt. That means, I will be able to satisfy the whole requirement of condenser 2 that means, this much amount of hot utility will be saved, but I will be using a higher amount of power 0 0.77597 megawatt. So, my saving will be in negative that means, I have to use this much of power more than the base case but I will be able to save this much of hot utility. Let us go for design 4. In design 4 what is being done the heat which is available here is being pumped a part of it is being pumped to this level which is a process level and is operated by condenser 3 and the rest is sent to the cooling water. So, when this much amount of heat is pumped it satisfies this.
in fact this will should be 342.7 kilowatt and this will be 605.2 kilowatt and here a part of this is pumped to this energy level to satisfy the hot utility requirement of this and the other part is put into the cooling water. So, if we simulate this design then we see that for the level 1 we will be consuming 0 0.6028 megawatt and here 0 0.19752 megawatt and for level 2 we will be consuming 0 0.4173125 megawatt and 0 0.049278 megawatt and but we will be able to satisfy the total hot utility requirement through this. So, we do not have to purchase any hot utility requirement for the process. So, total energy requirement is this 0 0.72439 megawatt. Here also this is negative that means, I have to use more power than my base case, but I am able to satisfy my total hot utility requirement. Now, let us go to the design 5. Here what I am doing a part of this of this energy which we have received here in the evaporator is pumped to satisfy the hot utility requirement of this area and this is done through condenser 2 and the remaining part is put to the cold water. Similarly, a part of heat here 298.15 is put into this energy level to satisfy the demand hot utility demand here which is 403 and rest of it is put to the cold water. So, this is another arrangement and if we simulate it we see that for level 1 we will be consuming 0 0.303317 megawatt and 0 0.121534 megawatt and for level 2 we will be consuming 0 0.10485 megawatt and 0 0.19385 megawatt for level 2 and here also in this case we are satisfying the total hot utility requirement of the process. So, total energy requirement is this 0.61417 megawatt and here we are able to do the saving this, this much saving than the base case, base case is this. 0 0.677642 megawatt and we are also able to serve the hot utility requirement. So, summary here this is our base case here I was using 1670 hot utility and this is the power requirement for this case. In design 1 the hot utility requirement has reduced to 126. 7. Here I am using 3 evaporators and 2 condensers. In the base case, I am using 2 evaporators and 1 condenser, and this is the requirement of the energy. So, energy saving is minus 40.92 and hot utility saving is 403. In the design 3, design 2, I am using 1 to 6, 7 hot utility. Here there are 3 number of evaporator, 2 number of condensers and energy saving is 69.566, but I am only saving 403 kilowatt of hot utility. In the design 3, hot utility requirement is reduced to 456, here 3 number of evaporators, 2 number of condensers, but there is no saving that means I am using more power than the base case. So, it is a saving is minus but I am able to save 1 to 1 4 kilowatt of hot utility. Here design number 4 the hot utility requirement is 53 only this is 4 evaporators and 3 condensers and here also saving is negative that means I am consuming more energy than my base case and there is a saving of 16 1 6 1 7 hot utility kilowatt of hot utility and design 5 here the hot utility requirement is 0. I am using 4 number of evaporators and 3 number of condensers 
and I am that is a saving in the energy of 63.472 kilowatt and the energy saving in hot utility is maximum. So, this appears to be design 5 appears to be the best design, but we as far as energy conservation is concerned, but the design has to be checked through other yardsticks also. Now, let us see the decision will depend upon the design complexities number of evaporators, condensers and heat exchangers etcetera, because a complex design with more number of units are not good designs. The second consideration will be the saving in power and third consideration will be the saving in hot utility, but in this case in the present case the cost of hot utility will be low and thus will not affect the tack much. Nevertheless, the present example offers a method to analyze and target refrigeration system. Though here the hot utility cost will be very less and it will not going to affect the tack much, but this problem or this solution method gives a method to analyze the refrigeration targeting well and that is why we have taken up this. Now, this is the property data for polypropylene and the enthalpies and the densities were calculated based on this data. Now, thank you.